So 1030 update on Tropical Storm Laura and Marco. You can see both storms here now uh, on this uh, satellite image. Marco is right near the southeast Louisiana coastline. Uh, not looking too healthy. Uh, as expected, it's getting heavily sheared. So you see the exposed low-level circulation, all the storms off to the east. And it is weakening as expected as well. Our main concern is going to be Laura. Uh, you can see Laura there uh, moving across Cuba, uh, centered uh, more on the southern part of the coastline. And that's going to be our primary focus uh, as far as impacts from these systems. Looking first at Tropical Storm Laura, here's the latest track. Uh, this is west compared to what we looked at last evening. Uh, but it's been consistent uh, the last couple of advisories. Uh, and that, that is for the cone uh, to cover much of the upper Texas coast and uh, western half of Louisiana. And really a center track anywhere within that cone is a possibility. Uh, we do have a number of tracks uh, that follow sort of the center of this forecast cone. We also have some models that uh, take a track along the left-hand edge, and those come in more directly into our area. Uh, so uh, that's that's the uh, situation right now. Uh, it could take that last-minute turn up into Louisiana, or it, it could wait and turn a little bit later, uh, and that would bring it right into, uh, say, Galveston Bay or uh, parts of our coastline here. Forecast at landfall, still forecast to be 90 knots or 105 miles per hour, which would make it a Cat 2, just shy of a Cat 3. Certainly couldn't rule out a, a Category 3 uh, major hurricane landfall with this. Uh, standard practice is to plan for a category higher than forecast, and so that would take it up into Cat 3. And then what does that cone mean? It basically gives you an idea of where the center is likely to track based on past track errors. So I, I do recommend using that cone to, to model the uncertainty here. Day three uncertainty, and the track is on average about 100 miles. So even though the center line uh, takes it into Beaumont, Port Arthur, uh, just realize that don't focus on that center line. You've got that 100-mile uh, mean error for these systems. Just quickly on Marco, as I said, it is weakening. Uh, the latest intensity, 50 miles per hour, just making landfall now a little bit uh, further north than the track yesterday evening, uh, and that's going to take it more over land, so that'll uh, allow it to weaken even further. We're really not expecting uh, significant impacts from Marco at all, uh, perhaps just a little bump in the uh, surf uh, along the beaches uh, tonight and tomorrow. Uh, from the surf that was uh, generated yesterday when Marco was a stronger storm. So our primary focus is really going to be on Laura. Uh, Laura has the potential to become, as I said, perhaps a, a, a Category 2 or even a major hurricane. You can look at here the tropical storm force wind probabilities, uh, and you can see the highest values are along that axis uh, over western Louisiana. Uh, but but very high values as well along the upper Texas coast and well inland. Anytime we have a, a fairly f quickly moving hurricane, uh, there's not a lot of time for the wind to decay. So you can get wind impacts well inland, and you can see that demonstrated here. So for if that were to take a more westerly track, just understand uh, even our inland counties could get significant winds from this system. Looking at the same type of map, this one for 58 mile per hour sustained. Again, the highest probabilities over western Louisiana, but uh, fairly high probabilities extending into east Texas as well uh, and the upper Texas coast. So, um, of course, if the track shifts a little bit, that whole pattern will shift. But right now, the highest probabilities are in uh, western Louisiana for these 58 mile per hour sustained winds. And once again, notice pretty high, high probabilities well inland, even for 58 mile per hour sustained. And then we could do the same thing with hurricane force winds, again, highest over uh, southwest Louisiana, um, but fairly significant probabilities on, on the upper Texas coast as well. 
and that of course would shift if we get a left of a left cone track timing this is similar to what we briefed yesterday it looks like those tropical storm force winds get to the coast sometime wednesday evening uh that's the most likely arrival time from uh the winds uh from laura still looking at uh, the best uh looking at modeling the potential surge here with a category two meow as we looked at yesterday um, this is how deep the water could get if we do get that direct hit uh, from a kind of worst case category two landfall and the areas in white there are levied so we don't have uh, good data for them um, this is actually a cat one let me jump ahead to this uh, this is the cat two what we want to actually use for this event and you can see all those areas in red uh, indicating 9 to 15 feet above ground level um, and, and so um, you know that that's the type of surge we could be dealing with if we get a direct hit uh, from Laura and then just zooming in on different areas we we went through this exercise yesterday um, I really recommend using Hervac, as we've spoken about, uh, to kind of investigate your area uh, and look at the surge threat or the surge risk uh, from this type of storm should it make a direct hit. If it does turn into Louisiana, uh, we won't see nearly um, these levels. Um, but if, if it does track more directly toward us near and to the right of the track, center track, you can expect uh, these type of values potentially. And so here we're looking at areas along uh, Galveston Bay uh, on the western shore there. Some of the communities, you know, would include San Leon and uh, Seabrook, Kima, Shore Acres. Uh, and then we're looking there down the coast uh, for Matagorda and Brazoria County. Uh, as you get further down the coast, of course, the chances are less and less. Uh, because if you are left of the center track, you you won't see these values. So these really apply to areas near and to the right of where the center ends up tracking. And then just going back a bit to look at Bolivar and Galveston Island, all depending on elevation, the lower elevation areas on these uh, land masses have the deeper water. And this is not standing water. This is water that flows in and flows out rapidly. So uh, for those of y'all that were here for Ike, you remember this phenomenon of uh, storm surge. Uh, big uh, marine event as well. Uh, what I'm showing here are the seas forecast for Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, and Wednesday evening. And so you can see that area associated with Laura of 15 to 20 foot seas kind of working its way uh, across the Gulf and uh, reaching our coastline as we get into Wednesday evening. So uh, you would expect a big rise in the surf and the waves, uh, especially Wednesday night, but really starting Wednesday afternoon uh, from this, uh, this system, Hurricane Laura. Um, and this is even if it does make that turn, we'll still see that, that uh, surf activity there in the, in the high waves. Rainfall, uh, latest briefing, they, they, they're messaging four to eight inches, locally up to 12 inches near the track. So take a look at this Laura rainfall map and understand that if it were to take a more left track, that whole rainfall pattern would shift. Uh, and then that four to eight, locally 12 would be in our area. But if it does turn up into Western Louisiana, uh, we'll be on the fringe and won't get those rain amounts. Uh, they'll be more modest. Flash flood uh, outlook, it, it mirrors that rainfall forecast we just showed. Uh, on this map, uh, the areas in yellow and red have the greatest risk, uh, but there is a marginal risk for flash flooding in the green areas as well. Uh, and again, that whole pattern would shift if the track shifts. So uh, just to sum up, Tropical Storm Laura is still forecast to become a hurricane and then reach uh, uh, Category 2 status at least uh, by landfall. It could even go a little bit higher than that. Has potential to bring damaging winds, dangerous storm surge flooding, and high surf uh, near 
uh, into the right of the landfall area, which could be Texas, uh, the upper coast, uh, or it could uh, turn up into western Louisiana. So very, uh, a very close call. Uh, we do have a number of models that are clustered sort of in that uh, Beaumont, Port Arthur uh, state line kind of track. Uh, but we also have some that take a left side cone track with a direct hit on our area. So we still have some uncertainty in there. Still modeling that surge potential. Uh, Hurricane Center recommends a category two uh, worst case scenario. And so that's what we showed in the presentation. Uh, water levels uh, would really come up uh, as the storm comes in Wednesday night, um, but they could, they will probably start to rise at least somewhat uh, during the, the day on Wednesday. You know, we'll, we typically get that early uh, forerunner uh, surge uh, from the swell from the storm. So I would expect some uh, water to rise during the day on Wednesday as well. Uh, tropical storm force winds most likely to reach the Texas coast Wednesday evening. And so based on that timing, we would expect to see watches issued for the area uh, probably uh, this afternoon or maybe this evening. So uh, look for those to come out, probably storm surge uh, and hurricane or tropical storm watches uh, sometime today. If Laura does curve north, we wouldn't see the, the more severe impacts, uh, but um, it's a very, very close call, and as I said, there's a number of uh, scenarios which take it uh, right into our area. Not too concerned about Marco. You know, seeing that cone coming over our area, it looks pretty severe, but uh, the storm has already started to weaken uh, and should continue to weaken pretty uh, drastically by the time it would get here uh, sometime tomorrow. So really not too concerned about Marco. It's really all about Laura at this point. And then just to sum up forecast confidence, uh, still kind of in the mid-range there. Um, the, the forecast track for Laura has become a more narrowed down, um, but the impacts are uncertain because of they're very, very sensitive to small changes in the track. Uh, and as I said, at this point, even typical errors are about 100 miles. So uh, a shift east or a shift west is going to make all the difference. All right. And so uh, we will do another advisory at 4.30. Uh, excuse me. There'll be another advisory and webinar at 4.30. I'm going to stop the recording now.